Dear classmates, welcome to the BOSI testing class. This chapter is for modeling. This is our cross row map. As we can see on this row map, for modeling provide important foundation for the subsequent force simulation and the test pattern generation. So this is a very important chapter. Here is a motivating problem. For this end gate, there are two inputs and four possible test patterns 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Suppose that your manager says we have only time for two test patterns. So which two patterns are you going to select and what is the reason? To answer this question, we will need four models. So why am I learning this chapter? The first reason is that four model provides quantitative measure for our test quality. The second reason is that four models makes test automation possible. Here is a famous quotation from George Box. He said that all models are wrong but some are useful. I think this is a suitable quotation for this chapter. This chapter includes five sections. We will first do an introduction, followed by some useful four models, and then we will introduce four detection and uh, four coverage. Then we conclude this chapter. So before we go into this chapter, we need to define some keywords. First, a defect is an, an intended physical difference between hardware implementation and its intended design. For example, on our right hand side, suppose that two black wires are our intended design. However, during the implementation, we accidentally have a particle falling in between these two pieces of wires. This is what we call a defect. It may cause, for example, a short to ground effect. The second definition, fault. A fault is a representation of defect at abstracted logic level. Continued from our previous example, for this end gate, suppose that we have a defect which short input B to ground. We can model this defect as a B stuck at 0, 4. This is what we call a fault model. The next definition, an error is wrong output signal value. For example, for this end gate, if we apply input 1, 1 to test the gate, the good output is 1, but the erroneous output is 0. So this is what we call an error. In this lecture, we will use this notation by separating the good value and the erroneous value by a slash. The next definition is a failure. A failure means deviation from expected behavior. For example, suppose we have this defect in our computer and our computer will crash online. So this is what we call a failure. In summary, a defect can be modeled as a fault, which can be manifested as an error, which will cause system failure. This slide shows many examples of defects. For material defects, we have defects in the bulk, for example, cracks or crystal imperfection. 
During wafer process, we can have dust particle that cause open or short, or we can have gate outside pinhole, bad ion implantation, mask problem, and so on. During package, we can have outside breakdown caused by careless handling. And finally, we also have wear out defect or aging defect. For example, we can have oxide breakdown due to overstress or open and short due to electrical migration. There are many, many more defects that are not shown on this slide. Here are some sample pictures of the defect. For example, this can be a short and open here. Defects can be also random or systematic. Random defects are caused by random factors such as particles, scratches, and so on. We don't see correlation across wafers or dye. This is what we call random defect. On the other hand, systematic defects are caused by deterministic factors such as mask problem or lithography problem. We can see strong correlation across the wafer and dye. For example, suppose that the intended design are two pieces of wires. However, when we manufacture this circuit, we can have a particle falling in between these two wires. This is a random defect. However, on this lower picture, we had lithography problem which caused two wires to be shorted together. This can be a systematic defect. So, we have introduced defects which can be modeled as a fault in the logic level. And the fault can be manifested itself as an error in the I.O. signal level. Finally, in the behavior level, we can have a system failure. For digital circuits, defect modeling means that we represent a defect at the abstracted logic level. So this is an important part for IC testing. So why do we need full modeling? The first reason is that full modeling quantify the test quality. As we have shown in previous slides, there are so many different defects and they are hard to handle by automatic EDA tools. How many possible defects are there in a circuit? There are way too many defects that we cannot count. So we need four models such that we can easily calculate the number of faults in a circuit. Number two reason is that four models help to make test automation possible. With four model, we can run ATPG to generate test patterns. We can run full simulator to evaluate test quality, and we can have automated diagnosis. All of the above automatic tools need four models. With a four model, we can now define a test pattern. Test patterns are also known as test vectors, which are input Boolean values for a specific fault. For example, uh, here is a B stuck at 0, 4. We need a pass pattern A, B equals to 1 to detect the 4. A test set is a set of test patterns. For example, we can have 1, 1 and 0, 0 in this test set. The test length is the number of test patterns in a test set. For example, if we have 1, 1 and 0, 0 in the test set, the test length is equal to 2. To reduce our test cost, 
Of course, it is preferred to reduce the test length. Fault coverage is defined as the number of detected faults over the number of total faults. This number is between 0 and 100%. Fault coverage is the most widely used quantitative measure for test set quality. High fault coverage implies more effective tests. For example, a fault coverage between 95 to 100% is generally regarded as a good test. However, if the fault coverage is lower than 70%, typically it's not a good coverage. The fault coverage number can depend on the company and the product requirement. Recall that in Brown and Williams model, we have this equation where defect level is equal to 1 minus yield to the power of 1 minus fault coverage. From this equation, we know that higher fault coverage typically indicates higher quality. So now it's a quiz for you. Continue from our motivating problem. Your manager asks you to pick two patterns. So which two are you going to pick? Suppose that you pick 1, 1 and 0, 0 for the end gate. The reason is that you thought both output 1 and output 0 functions are tested by these two patterns. So what is the single stock type for coverage of this test set? Given this table, we have six faults for this end gate. They are A stuck at 0, A stuck at 1, B stuck at 0, B stuck at 1, C stuck at 0, and C stuck at 1. Each column in this table shows the good and the faulty output. The erroneous output values are highlighted. So we can see that Pattern 1, 1 detect 1 stuck at 0, 4, B stuck at 0, 4, and the C stuck at 0, 4. Pattern 0, 0 detects C stuck at 1, 4. So what is your full coverage here? Yes, you are right. It's 4 over 6, which is approximately 67%. This is not a very good number for a simple circuit like this. So now let's compare two testing methodology with or without four models. If we test a circuit without four model, typically we test the circuit based on the functionality. If we do it in this way, that would require manual test generation, which is labor intensive. If we test the circuit by the structure, we use four models. In structural testing, we can use automatic test pattern generation, which is fast and efficient. In terms of fault coverage, functional test typically has very low coverage, as we have shown in the previous quiz. On the contrary, automatic test pattern generator can generate high coverage test patterns. In terms of test speed, functional testing provides a speed testing because our test patterns are generated by designers so we can test the circuit at specified speed as our specification. This helps to detect delay faults. On the other hand, for structure testing, because ADPG patterns are random patterns, those patterns can exercise the circuit in different ways from functional mode. So generally, we cannot test the circuit at very high speed. In terms of test power, 
In functional testing, circuits are running in the same condition as the functional mode, so the power is the same as our specification. However, in structural testing, circuits are not running in the same way as our functional mode, so the test power can be higher than our specification. This can cause overheating problem. Finally, for verification and the silicon debugging, functional testing is very helpful for debugging because these test patterns are written by designers. So if the circuit fails the test, we can debug what's wrong with the design. On the other hand, ATPG patterns are random patterns. So designers cannot do anything if the circuit failed the test. Overall speaking, functional testing has its strengths and the structural testing also has its strengths. So in summary, functional testing and the structural testing are both needed for different reasons. In summary, in this video, we have introduced four modelings. Four model helps to quantify the test and automate the test. Four modeling means that we represent a defect at abstracted logic level. And the test length is the number of test patterns in a test set. Four coverage is the number of detected fault over the number of total fault. Structural testing and functional testing are both needed for different reasons. Thank you for listening.